Arsh Funner here. And, uh, the topic today is uh, why people are so obsessed with money. And uh, you know, I cut some notes there, um, which I will go through now. Okay, so money. Um, from fastcompany.com. Okay, so money stops buying happiness when your income surpasses uh, fifty thousand dollars U.S. dollars, I assume, which is um forty-three thousand eight hundred fifty-two euro. To seventy thousand uh, dollars, so sixty-one thousand. All right, so, so somewhere between forty-three and sixty-one thousand euro. At some stage of that level, you know, the amount of money you earn is gonna stop bringing you happiness. So from this, I can tell that a certain amount of money will bring you happiness because you need a certain amount to survive in this life. Okay, so I'm sure there's a few exceptions. If you're a self-sufficient farmer or some, I don't know, something else, then you probably could make a living for yourself uh, without. Oh, you'd be able to survive, you'd be able to eat, you'd be able to survive anyway. But you know, for if you want to get more uh, material goods, but they're not necessarily greed. I mean, it could be getting something like a bike, which is not bad for the environment at all. Good way to get around better than a car anyway. So it could be you know, tools, it could be uh, you know, fencing to uh, separate uh, different areas of your farm, whatever. So that, that's the thing, you know, a certain amount of money is good, it means resources. Um, but, you know, so you need a certain amount. Uh, I'm not expecting anybody to go homeless, but I mean, I think people need to stop being so greedy and, and sort of share it, their wealth out a bit. I mean, I don't do a job you hate to make loads of money. You'd be better off doing a job you uh, enjoy that you're not making a huge amount of money. Even if it's minimum wage here in Ireland, still, like, you'd be getting enough if you enjoy it then. That's the thing, like, if you're working long hours then you're not going to have a huge amount of time to enjoy your uh, wealth I mean if you have a job you're enjoying you really enjoy you're doing nine to five whatever eight hour shift you know four hours a week to five whatever 45 even 50 possibly even if you're doing that and you're making a then really you're getting so much enjoyment from the, those hours that no matter how much money you earn you're not going to be able to get a huge amount more enjoyment out of it because you could, you know, if you only take like three weeks off in the year, you only have a few hours free time in the evening, or even a couple of hours free time in the evening, whatever, or in the morning, whatever, then it's not going to make a huge difference. But still, you need a certain amount to survive. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so here's another uh, fact I got here. We don't always do what is good for us. People know we should exercise, eat healthy, spend time with family, but many don't. Yeah, that's the thing. People probably say, oh, well, we have enough money, you know. I know it'd be good for me to spend more time with, I don't know, family, eat healthy, uh, exercise. Maybe you could uh, stop doing the 12-hour days, doing eight, maybe even less. So have more time for the good things. Because we know we're going to get enough money, but you know, we just want to keep making money. Cause, you know, It's just like a habit addiction, maybe. And we're going to go on to why people want to keep ma making loads of money in a moment. And it's not just due to what you can buy. It's other reasons as well. Uh, so same place making money, yeah. Uh, people see their earnings as how well they're doing. They want to make improvements each year. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm guilty of this myself in terms of running. I mean, I make these goals for myself. I want to do better. I mean, these would be the Camp T Parkman, uh, which hilly course. I mean, I did 16.56 in at the end of September and early July, which was the last Saturday, 1st of July, I ran 16.26. So that's a 30 second improvement. So I sort of feel satisfied that I'm making improvements. I mean, if I say you're on 10 seconds slower, that I'd be really disappointed to bring down my mood a bit. But maybe I have to try to get away from that. Just think, you know, running's fun. It's an enjoyment thing. It's, um, why are we so obsessed with good times? We want to feel good about ourselves. We want to make ourselves feel like we're better than somebody else. But maybe that defeats the whole purpose of the whole thing a little bit. I mean, do we really want to show off? Oh, I'm not. I'm not a show off. I try not to be a show off. Anyway, so. Uh, but you know, running is like a humble sport. That it's, I mean, it's not it's not one of those show off type things. I mean, you notice runners get so little attention. You know, they just they're not used to getting being treated like a celebrity or anything, even if they're really good. So they're kind of happy with what they have generally. They're just uh, I'm sure there's exceptions to this, but you know, they're happy. They're modest. They're humble. They uh, they respect other athletes. They don't try to feel better. Okay, of course, they try to get good times. So they have to feel good about themselves, but. They generally don't show off. So I think running is a good sport in that way. It's uh, Okay. Uh, important things are hard to measure. So there's relationships. But money is not. Yeah, so 
I mean, you, you can't really give yourself a scientific or uh, being having a relationship is not exact science, it's like a feel. So you, you can't say, oh, I've got a better relationship with my family. How do you know? Your family could despise you and you don't even know it. Um, when you've got money, you know, it's, it's a number. Uh, it's obvious. It's like, oh, I earn 80 grand a year. You earn 60. I'm better than you. That's the way people seem to see it. We measure ourselves on money. Money is maths. If somebody has a bigger house, it means, oh, yeah, I already kind of mentioned that. Okay. Work colleagues aren't addicted to work. They're addicted to success it brings. Yeah, that is a really, that's really bad. It's like, uh, give an example my uh, stepbrother he was telling me one day morning that he was when we went out uh, trying to do some sprinting and he said I absolutely hated it nobody enjoys running and I'm thinking well why do they do it then I mean if you don't enjoy it what's the point of it I mean are you just trying to improve yourself uh, have, have a good name show off no I mean you know running is not like that sure I'll go out for a run you know, nobody says a word to me generally it's just I'm just out there on my own or out there with other people it's just just like another guy, it's no big deal. You know, nobody takes any notice of me generally. In fact, I'd say as a runner, I'm probably the most unrecognizable person on the earth. That's how I feel. I feel like I'm invisible. So, you know, why would I be doing it to show off if I feel invisible? I just don't understand it. And sure, you know, some guy who's only has an average level of fitness running to show off, just out of their mind. I mean, why? How are you going to show off? I mean, honestly, people just don't realize it. I mentioned this in another video that. Humans are slow, yeah. Most people consider, say, a 20 minute 5k as a very good time. But if people see you running a 20 minute 5k, they don't think you're going fast. They think you're going really slow. Because humans are, are like that. They think they're fast than they really are. I mean, 20 minute 5k seems fast because they try it and they can't do it themselves or it seems hard. But you see someone else doing it, it just looks so much slower. That's the thing. Um, I mean, measuring ourselves by money is the curse of county things. This is how people get into shit careers. Yeah. That is it. Like people do a career they don't really enjoy uh, just to make uh, loads of money. But you know the thing is, you spend so much time at work, then you know, you don't really have that much time to enjoy it. Okay, of course, I'm not saying you don't need money. I mean, you know, you can do a career you enjoy, or you should be able to do some find some sort of career you enjoy where you're making enough. Even if it's a minimum wage in Ireland, still it should be enough. If you're careful with your money, you should still have enough for food for for that stuff. One other thing that I, that I don't like about society is, it feels like if you want to have fun, if you want to be part of a group, you want to be with people, you need to pay money. You need to, I don't know, say so you want to go to a sporting event, football match, rugby match, athletics event. You know, you, if it's a big event, if it's a high standard, you don't always have to pay to get in. That's the thing. I mean, if you want to watch some for, uh, some live sport for free, you have to go to a low standard. It has to be. You have to watch amateurs play, not many other people are going to watch it. You might feel kind of pathetic going there and watching it. You might feel like, oh, I want to pay, what, this 30, 40 euro to get into a, a big match to, to make myself feel less pathetic or whatever. Uh, yeah. We uh, Stop the counting curse. We, we can do what we're meant to do. Yeah, the work, see. If you want to be an athlete, you know, you're not at the top of the list you're not earning huge money but you still you enjoy doing it you're happy you're still making enough you you don't have all those um, materialistics you might not have a car a big car a big house but you know you're doing what you want to do and you're happy um money's numbers it never ends if you depend on money to be happy you will never be happy this is what i well, okay I don't, know, I don't think this is word for word this is a quote i read yesterday by bob marley it might be a little bit off it's not on facebook yeah that's the thing numbers just never end that's the thing if you're Say you're an athlete and you want to uh, just run faster and faster times, then you know, probably never be happy. You know, some some guy, some guy who runs 24 minute 5k, might look at a guy who does 16 and think, oh, geez, that's, that's very good. He must be so happy with himself. But no, he might be like, oh, 16 is crap. I want to do better. I want to do better. And then you're never really happy with how well you do. It's so easy to get into that trap. And I've gotten into that trap myself, but somebody just needs to be happy. I mean, if you enjoy the sport, you know, that's, that's what it's about. I mean, Nobody's going to take any notice of you unless you're exceptionally good. Well, strangers, I mean, you're hardly going to be able to walk down the street without getting recognized and asked for autographs for running a 20 minute 5k, uh, I don't know, 11 minute 3k, uh, I don't know, five and a half minute mile. Yes, yeah, not, not the way it works. So, earning more money is a psychological need, not a 
physical. Oh wait, I'll go back to that last point. If you if you do have an aim that's realistic and you do get that aim, then a certain amount of happiness will come over you. But if you go aim for unrealistic games, then you know you're just not gonna be pleased with yourself. Okay, so earning more money is a psychological need, not a physical need. Yes, all in the head. Okay, so well, not in some cases when people really do need more, then it's not a psychological. It's they actually do need it, but. A lot of people have loads of money and just want more and more money or just um they're just it's all in the mind. There's just their greed is making them unsatisfied. Okay, so insecurity, we we if we have more money we will be accepted. Yeah, like socially accepted. I mean you might feel like you're worthless if you don't have much money. That's the thing, people always want to get something out of you. They don't want a, a useless friend, like oh I don't want a friend who just offers friendship. Who just gives me good advice? Who just tries to help me out in other ways he can without materialistic um, products? You need to. Oh, if this guy can't give me t some money on my birthday or something I like on my birthday, then you know he's a useless friend. Sure, I don't want friends with him. You know, this, this uh, very common. I mean, you might find it at a friend's birthday party if if you've got a poor friend who you generally sort of like their uh, personality but they they don't give you much for your birthday then you might pick the wealthier friend who you don't like as much to give you more money same goes with marriage somebody might m marry someone who has a lot of money but doesn't actually like the person because they want money i mean that's that's not a good p way to live i don't think it's getting worse in the past the gritty were seen as villains with charles dickens money obsessed scrooge a sick man in need of conversion yeah that's the thing it's getting worse um Example being France, just some leader called Marie Antoinette. She uh, I don't know, she was very wealthy. Well, the French were not generally. There's a lot of peasants around who were starving, and they wanted, I think, bread and more bread. And she said, if they want bread, we should give them cake. Let them have cake. And people were outraged by that. But nowadays they wouldn't be. I mean, okay, cake's not the best thing to be eaten, but you know it's got. I'm sure it's got nutrients, I'm sure it's got plenty of fat, some protein, some carbs. Uh, you know, if you're starving, you should just eat that. If you get it, better than eat nothing, let yourself starve. That's the thing. I mean, uh, nowadays, if somebody offered you, say, cake, a McDonald's burger, chips, something, crap food, you, they still take it. They see us. Uh, food and some, you know, not the best thing to eat, but it's got nutrients to keep you going, uh, to keep you sort of healthy or healthier anyway. So, yeah, you might feel that they were being a little bit uh, harsh because you know, if she was, if she actually was willing to help giving them cake, then they should have just taken it. Um, yeah, and here's Charles Viggins, money obsessed Scrooge. Yeah, so maybe back then they sort of saw the wealthy as villains. Now, wealthy is the thing to be, they're just respected. I mean, you know. A lot of the working class probably don't feel uh, right saying, oh, the, the wealthy or um, the wealthy person is just so uh, greedy and selfish and leading to everybody else suffering financially, not sharing out the wealth and all that, but you know, they might not feel entitled to it. might be something like deep down they feel it, but they don't feel, they feel afraid if they say it to someone's face, you know, people, will, they, they get abused for it. And as I said before, uh, social acceptance and all that, so... You know, sometimes wanting less lets you do what you really want to do. If you want to tell some uh, wealthy person about their wealth that they're a fat, greedy fucker, then you know, yeah, they're not gonna like you for it. But you know, you get to say what you want to say. You get to let the truth out, even if it means they won't. Get, they're less likely to help you out financially, whatever. You're saying what needs to be said. Maybe that's the route we need to take. So yeah. Okay, anyway, so anyway, that's more I say. It's definitely not there on money um well, we need some we need some to survive unless you know, we're self sufficient in some ways farming whatever self sufficient farmers but uh yeah we, we need some but you know in a country like Ireland you, nearly every career will help you get enough unless you're doing it voluntarily any paid career will get you enough money uh, you don't need to worry about it too much so that's my opinion so uh like subscribe comment give a dislike and uh Run out of time here, so uh, I'll see you another day. Goodbye.